So in a man, this femur comes down more vertical toward the patella. So that's going to be less movement of this patella. It's called patella tracking. It tracks inside its little house right here. And so for a man, it comes down straighter. So there's going to be less movement of this patella side to side. Can you see how that would happen? Mm -hmm. With a woman, has a larger Q angle, the femur comes down more at an angle. And so that's going to allow the patella to move side to side more. And that's not so good for the, for the knee. So women with a large Q angle, if they do a sport like running or something that's weight bearing, may be at an increased risk for an injury. The other issue with the Q angle is a performance issue, and this is what interests me because I'm, I'm all about running performance. For a man, when the femur comes down straight, when you push off the ground, all of the force is directed when you push off the ground vertically behind you, and that's going to propel you forward. <coughs> Remember when you were in high school physics class and you learned about force and vectors? Remember that? Sure. Sure, good. <laughs> force has magnitude and it also has direction. And so you also remember Newton's third law of physics when you were in high school? What's Newton's third law? So you didn't know you were going to get a physics lecture when you came today, did you? You may have paid for that whole seat, but you're only going to need the edge of it. <laughs> What's Newton's third law of physics? That's the first law. Very good, though. You hit one of the three. Gravitational pull? No, that's not a law at all. Well, that's, that's not one of his laws. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So you want to know how to run. Any runners in the room? A few? You want to know how to run faster? You push to the, against the ground with more force directly behind you, and that propels you more forward. You get a longer stride length. Stride length doesn't come from reaching out. Stride length comes from hip extension and producing a lot of force directly behind you against the ground. So what does this have to do with the QA? It has everything to do with the QA. Because the more at an angle this femur comes down, when you push against the ground, some of the force is lost in that horizontal direction. It's not all directed exactly vertically because the femur is coming down more at an angle. So you're pushing against the ground trying to go forward, but because the femur comes down, your leg comes down at an angle, some of that force that you're pushing with is lost in the horizontal direction. You don't want to be running horizontally. You want to be running forwardly. I just made up that word. <laughs> Does that make sense? Can you visualize that? That's one reason, at least mechanically speaking, that a woman can't run as fast as a man. Because you want all of that force directed in a vertical direction to propel you forward. You don't want anything going to the side. And force vectors have magnitude, how much force, and the direction that force is applied. Does that make sense? Very good. How does the, the Q angle affect the IT band? Well, it could affect the IT band because the IT band sits on the side here. So it's going to put more stress on all the structures. And so with a man, I mean, I'm not a physical therapist, but I want to take a good guess here. In a man, because this is coming down straight, and most people get IT band syndrome right here, right when they bend the knee, you feel it right on the side. And so in a man, because it comes down straighter, there's going to be less friction of that IT band against the knee. But in a woman, because it's coming down more at an angle, you can visualize how you'll have more friction here with the IT band and that could cause irritation and then pain. But I don't know. I don't know if there's any studies to show that a larger Q angle increases the incidence of IT band syndrome. I'm not sure about that. I'd have to look that up. Right. Body weight and body composition sex differences between men and women. Women are very good at adjusting their caloric intake to their caloric expenditure. So you ever notice it's harder for women to lose weight than it is for men? One of the reasons, from an evolutionary perspective, is that human beings in general are very good at replacing the calories that they lose through exercise or any other physical activity during the day. Women are really good at it, probably because of a woman's need to store more what? Say it louder. Fat. fat. Why do women need more fat? It's the trade-off for bringing new life into the world. 
And so because women need to hold on to more fat than men, women on a very subconscious level are very good at replacing the calories that they expend, even more so than men are. Women have more essential fat than men. Men only need, bare minimum, 3% body fat. Women need four times as much, 12%. So incidentally, this is why it's much more difficult for a woman to get a six-pack showing. For a man to get a six-pack showing, you know, he could get his body weight, body fat percentage down to maybe four or five or six percent, and that's still going to be above what's essential, so the guy's healthy, it's okay. And you can see the underlying muscles. But for a woman to see those abdominal muscles, she would likely have to get her body fat percentage lower than what's essential, and that's not healthy anymore. There's one truth about people who have six packs. What is that truth? They all have what? Back problems. Back problems? <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but they all have a very low percentage of body fat, right? You don't see somebody with a six pack who's got 20% body fat. That's not gonna be possible. Because where do human beings store their fat? This is how, where we store the most of our, our adipose tissue. So everybody who's got a six pack has to have a low percentage of body fat. And for men, it's pretty easy to get low and still be okay. You can still be above what's essential. But for women, it may not be possible. So for a woman who has a six pack, she's gotta have a very low percentage of body fat. So low that it might, be not, not, might not be healthy anymore. During exercise, women must move more body fat with less muscle mass than men. The greater body fat slows release of body heat while exercising because fat as we all know, is an insulator. Fat people don't get as cold in the wintertime. That's why whales have so much blubber on them. You know, I live in San Diego where everyone talks about whales all the time. Everyone goes whale watching in San Diego. Whales have a lot of blubber on them because it's ice cold down there underneath the Pacific Ocean. And they need something to keep them warm. So fat is a good insulator, but it makes it harder to dissipate body heat. Too low body fat percentage can lead to menstrual cycle dysfunction, and then we get back to this bone issue again, risk of bone injuries, and you'll see that as a recurring theme throughout this, that bones can be put at risk under certain conditions.